Hi everyone, welcome to another YouTube video here. Today I'm going to be talking about the uh, Josh McDaniels and the Dave Ziegler introduction conference for the Raiders. If you don't know, I'm a big old Raider fan here. Um, not that owning a hat displays my fandom, but you know, I've been a Raider fan since I was, well, I was born a Raider fan, really. And uh, I want to start making um, commentary videos on my sports teams, like the Raiders and the Kings. Um, so I'm going to start here with the introduction conference and I'm going to have my five biggest takeaways uh, as I watch the conference. So before I get into the, my five biggest things, a few things I noticed that might be, uh, you know, might mean nothing at all, might mean something, you know, I don't know. This is just kind of speculative things that I noticed was one, I thought Josh looked a little nervous, Josh McDaniels, uh, during the interview interview or the conference whatever um you know he kept retreating for his water and uh i thought that was maybe a nervous tick now again that might not mean nothing and i'm not really one to speak you know i don't have the best composure and i'm still getting used to being in front of cameras and stuff so you know take that what you will i also thought ziegler came off as very um no nonsense authoritative guy and um you know that that probably is a good thing uh one thing that made me think that was uh, Josh kind of made a comment about their friendship and how you know long their relationship goes and he kind of was like more like a buddy buddy kind of like energy and Ziegler didn't really match that um, and not that I'm questioning their friendship I'm sure their friendship is genuine it's just I think Ziegler he gave off more of a, a, a authoritative figure and he did say i think he said he was a principal at a, at a high school i know he said he was a counselor um so i mean that probably shows in that in that demeanor i also really loved that josh acknowledged josh acknowledged his uh his denver failure tenure um he didn't make a statement saying he knew a little bit about football back then but he knew nothing about people and he failed miserably because of that and he's grown and learned a lot since then and really tried to uh what he say he said uh, really try to help learn how to teach and grow the people around him grows coaching staff help the players grow and uh, that was something he really worked on um so i really i really like that uh from what he said and also he said he lacked a clear vision of what he wanted to be as a head coach back then and this time he has a crystal clear vision of who he wants to be as a as a head coach and that seems like a really good sign moving forward so let's get into the five things that my five biggest takeaways from this conference so my, the first big takeaway i saw in this conference was that synergy was a very very crucial thing for mark davis apparently he asked every head coach candidate that he had interviewed uh, who he thought would be who, who they thought should be the gm and i thought that was very interesting and kind of a very good technique to go about because everybody knows your gm and your head coach are typically tied together especially if your gm hires the head coach which isn't the case here but they they're typically a tandem that when one gets fired the other one typically gets fired so i thought that was a very good thing for him to do um, it was also josh also said that having ziggler here as the gm was very crucial to have a gm that was familiar with him and he was familiar with uh, when he was thinking about becoming a head coach. Mark also said he believes he could, or he believes Ziggler and Josh could bring the Patriot way over here to Vegas with Josh's ability to adapt and his track record with QBs such as Matt Castle and most recently Mac Jones. Um, and then Ziggler and his track record with uh, per player personnel and being able to find guys that may be kind of no-name guys that fit the system and play well and he he believes that they will succeed in that and thus bringing some of that Patriots culture uh, over here to to Vegas well I'm not in Vegas but you know over to the Raiders in Vegas the second thing I thought was a big takeaway was Derek Carr's extension was not guaranteed 
Ziggler made a statement saying uh, he wanted to first get to know Carl on a more personal level uh, and build that relationship and then see and evaluate if he might be a good fit here before he jumps on to an extension, which is probably the right way to do, especially as a new regime. You're, you don't know the quarterback. I mean, you've played against them or you've seen him play, but you never, you know, you're not in that building and now you are. So I thought that was really good. I like Derek Carr. I wouldn't be mad if he got extended. Like I know some Raider fans would be, but you know, you can't cheat the process and it doesn't seem like he's gonna cheat the process. So I thought that was very good. Um, and all the reports I think coming out when the news was, breaking out that McDaniels would be hired was that Carr's extension would follow along but that doesn't seem to be the case uh Carr's gonna have to earn it um and the GM's gotta believe he deserves it also quick note Ziggler did say he will make all the player personnel decision he has final say so that's also a nice change of pace given the <laughs> Gruden era um which I thought Personally, Mayock deserved at least a year to be that guy, have one year of being the final say in decisions, but alas, that's not where we are, so we gotta move forward, and I'm looking forward to Ziggler and McDaniels, but let's continue on with the video. Now, my third biggest takeaway from that press conference interview is uh, Mark Davis made it very clear that this is not a rebuild, this is not a retool, they're just looking to take the next step. And... I agree with what he said in terms of John Gruden, Mike Mayock built a solid foundation. Rich Bisaccia established a great culture in the locker room. And it's Dave and Ziggler's job to just uh, take the baton and move forward and go on to the next step. Now, to me, that also implies that there's no wiggle room uh, for losing, really. And I don't think they want to. Not you know, Obviously, this isn't a real rebuild, so uh, Mark isn't going to have the patience I believe he, he had with Gruden and with McKenzie and Del Rio uh, to, to go through kind of a losing period to get to a playoff team. This is a playoff team. Uh, if they And given what they went through this year, um, all the distractions, all the chaos, all the firings, all the, the, the you know, tragedies, they still finished 10 and 7. I think had one of the toughest records in, in the season, uh, toughest schedules in the season. And to go 10 and 7 and be dangerously close to beating the team that's going to re represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. Uh, so if they go next year and finish 8 and 9 or 7 and 10, it's going to be a huge disappointment and a huge regression that Josh will not you know have the leash to really do that he has to come in and and compete not compete for a playoff spot he's got to be a playoff team um and i think that really puts the pressure on them to succeed year one my fourth biggest takeaway is that the defense is going to look very different moving forward uh you know somebody asked josh if they're going to be a 3-4 base or 4-3 base and josh said no we got to focus more on the nickel this is where the league is uh, we got to be more of a nickel defense uh, you got to have about five starting corners in this league now and that's going to be something they're going to move going forward whether it's a 3-4 base or 4-3 base um, he did say this team is molded into a 4-3 base so he's going to keep that in mind uh, but you know prepare to see a lot more nickel which um, we do need uh, I think an upgrade at the corner position I like Casey Hayward and Nate Hobbs you know we need to make sure we keep them Nate Hobbs on the rookie contract I think Casey Hayward will be a free agency uh, acquisition now he's a free agent now but um resigning him should be a priority but we lacked depth there um Fison had really good moments then really like you know made some mistakes um Amick Robertson still developmental um and you know that's definitely a position we're gonna need to upgrade to play the nickel so I'm looking forward to seeing those upgrades made because I do agree that that's probably where the league is right now on its defenses and you need a strong nickel defense to really stop this pass heavy league we're in and my final takeaway is really to just be excited but skeptical right uh whether it's just this whole new regime as a whole um i like you know the things they said and i like kind of 
where this might be going and definitely like the things Mark Davis said in this press conference. Um, but again, it's kind of the same thing we've always hear from everybody. You know, they talked about building um, a high culture locker room, building high culture guys or high character guys and smart football players, explosive football players. And that's the same thing we heard from Mayock and Gruden. And, and you're going to hear from everybody on what they want to build. And obviously, high character guys can be misleading you might think somebody's a high character guy and then you get a damon arnett and you know it's just it's just you know i'm excited to see what we do i'm excited to see uh how innovative our offense can be because i thought our offense really really lacked creativity um and so i'm excited with josh to see what he does and where Carr might go maybe take steps forward under josh mcdaniels but i'm also still skeptical because it's the same thing we always hear so until it's done you know until until they get the job done you just you, you got to be hopeful but skeptical so as a fan base that's just the message i would like to get across anyways what did you think of the press conference uh were are you excited about josh mcdaniels and dave ziggler hires if not who did you think the raiders should hire and what do you think the raiders should have done again personally i thought mayaka and Bisaccia at least deserved one more year uh to run it back a year without maybe all the chaos and a year uh just just really show what they can do as a tandem but we didn't get that but regardless, I'm excited for Ziggler and McDaniels, uh, especially after this press conference, leading into the press conference. I was a little skeptical with Josh McDaniels, given his track record as a former head coach. And I'm looking forward to it now. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what we do um, in the draft and in the free agency. Um, and yeah. I'm excited to see a nickel defense um, and upgrades at the corner position. I'm excited to see um, new creativity in the offense. And, uh, and, you know, I'm really sad to see Rich Passaccia go. I really like Rich Passaccia. I like his um, personality, his demeanor. Um, I felt like uh, he... I could see why all the players in the locker room really love Bisaccia. He just seems like somebody you want to just, you know, go to war for. You know, there's somebody that you just really respect. And and Josh is going to have to earn that from the players. And that's going to be hard. But I think it's done. I think it's doable. I think it's possible. And I look forward to seeing how this Raider season goes. Thank you for watching. I will be definitely making more Raider content in the future. And I hope you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you uh, thought any of this was insightful or interesting to you. Mm -hmm.